put our hands together. It's a time of worship. Hallelujah. Sing it out. Great are you, Lord, mighty in strength. You are faithful. You will never be. We will praise you. All of our days, it's for your glory. We offer everything. Raise your hand, all your nations shout to God, all creation. How awesome is the Lord Most High? Will you send us? And uh, welcome, welcome to Lake Point Church. And uh, today we celebrate uh, three years of Lake Point here anniversary. So let's give us a hand. And um, what a what a great day! We ought to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And I'm wearing green, so you don't have to pinch me. I'm good. And uh, and a lot of people don't understand, but St. Patrick's Day is um, is a real good connection to church, and St. Patrick Day, uh, you know, St. Patrick out in Ireland, he was a church planter. That's what he was, and, and uh, nowadays we think of green beer and everything else, but no, really, the guy was a church planter. And so that's kind of a great connection today with us as we celebrate three years of planting this church, and uh, I'm excited for what God is doing here. And we have a very, very special service planned, 
And um, I'm excited about what's going to happen this morning. I know that you're going to be blessed by the service um, this morning. And uh, a, a few things in a, in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've got an um, Easter service, and we're going to have a great time. If you get the invite cards, or hopefully you're inviting people. We're going to have um, you know, a great service. We're going to have an egg hunt after the service. And, and, and then we even have a fun photo booth. So you come and, and get you know, crazy pictures of your family or a nice picture, however you want to do it. But you get one of those uh, fun family photo trips, and, and uh, you can share that on Facebook as well. We'll have that available too. And that's happening on Easter in two weeks. And uh, we're excited about that. And then also, um, this is kind of brand new. This is the first time out. But there's a lady, there was a show back in the 1980s um, called The Fact of Life. How many of you remember The Fact of Life? Okay, and The Fact of Life, uh, there was a lady, Blair. Blair, that little lady right here, that's Blair. And um, guess who's coming to church on September 29th, 2013? Lisa Wetzel. And uh, here she is. And she was on Survivor last year. And we're looking forward to a day with her just on Sunday, September 2013. So this is the first time we're just letting you guys know about it. Just kind of whet your appetite a little bit. And uh, I'm excited about this. It's going to be a great day here. And it's going to be here before you know it. It's going to be an awesome, awesome opportunity. So we're looking forward to that. So, well, here's what we want to do real quick before we continue in our worship. Some of you, this is your very first time here at Lake Point Church. And uh, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for celebrating worshiping with us and um, as you'll see here at Lay Point it's not about us you know you'll notice that by the end of the day it's about Jesus it's about him and, and what, what Jesus did on the cross that's why we exist if it wasn't you know if Jesus wasn't around if Jesus didn't raise again you know rose again from the third day if he was still in the grave we wouldn't be here but we celebrate a risen savior and that's why we exist we're here in Lake Point Church. We're here in Macomb County to make Jesus' name more famous. Because it's not about us. It's never been about us. And, and so we celebrate what God is doing here. And we can't wait to share what's happening. And so for some of you, this is your very first time. Thank you. We're asking that you take a minute. And um, during the service in your program, as you came in, you should have received um, a, a connection card. I want to ask you to take a minute. Let us know that you came Build us out, and at the end of the service, we'll have an offering time. And we're just going to ask that you drop this in the offering bucket. Let us know about your present with that. Keep your wallet in your pocket. We don't want your money. We just like to know who you are. Put you on our mailing list. Let you know what's happening. You know, make sure you get a reminder about Lisa coming in September, Easter, and, and all the things that we're doing throughout the year. And, and everybody else, if you have your connection card, pull it out. At least put your name on it. If you're a regular attender, at least put your name on it. Let us know that you're here this morning. And um, at, the end of the, at the end of the service, you can drop this in your offering bucket. Let's ask God to bless us this morning. Let's ask God and thank God for what he has done here. God, we thank you. We thank you for the being an awesome God. And God, we thank you for helping us start this church. We thank you for what, what we have seen. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Uh, and so God, we celebrate your name. It's not about us. It's never been about us. It's always been about you. And so God, we worship you this morning. We celebrate you this morning. We thank you for what you've done here in this place. And you name I pray. Amen. You may stand.
trials and the change One friend remains One friend remains Your love never fails and never gives up It never runs out on me. Love never fails, it never gives, it never runs out on me.
seated. All right. Well, um, one of the things that we want to do today as you leave, and um, how many of you like cupcake? We got cupcake fans here. I see some hands. Some people. Uh, I mean, we got the cupcake people. We're the cupcake people. Raise your hand if you're a cupcake people. Okay. Now, how many of you are pie people? Raise your hand if you're pie people. Okay. I, and some of you like both, and, and that may be a problem. And we'll have some uh, recovery program just for you. But um, anyway, we got a cupcake here. And as you leave today, we got uh, a cupcake with the number three on it. So it's kind of like a little happy birthday cake. And I'm, I'm not going to hold it. So, Alan, I want you to. Eat this in front of everybody. No, just hold on to it. Can you hold on to it for me? Uh, so as you leave today, you're going to get a cupcake, and, and I hope you like cupcake because we've got plenty of cupcakes for everybody, and, um, and that would be a great time. So I'm just excited about three, day, three years here. And uh, before we just get into this, I just really quick want to uh, see those who had um, been with us from the beginning. If you've been here from the beginning, like you were here like in that first month of Lake Point Church, you know, and I'm talking about in that first launch service and where we began, and um, if you were part of that first month, or maybe first couple months, I want you to stand up. All right, stand up, stand up. Uh, there, good, let's give you guys a round of applause. Thank you, we got some in the back. Good, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. And, and that just shows you where we've been and, and how God has blessed us and what, what's going on here at Lake Point. And um, three years ago, we started our very first service. Uh, we were not in this building. We were in um, Iroquois Middle School, which is just down the road, uh, between 21 and 22 miles. And, and um, we were there, and we had Chris Sly. He was um, a friend of mine who was on American Idol in 2007. And I had invited him to lead worship for us. He was a finalist. He was like number nine or number 10. And he came for a very, very first service um, on March 21st, 2010. And, and what, a, what a ride. We had 300 people, almost 300 people that showed up on the very first service. And uh, just a bunch of people that came. And, um, and out of that, we started the church. And, uh, and this happened. And so never could dream, never could imagine how it would play out, but God has been good, and um, it's been an amazing journey the past three years. And so uh, this morning, 
I, I want to um, talk about a, a, a few things, and um, I hope that will challenge all of us. And um, Jesus told a parable, and Jesus was known for telling parables. Jesus was big on parables. Parable, if you don't know what a parable is, it's an earthly story with the biblical truth. And Jesus liked to tell stories. Jesus was all about just sharing the stories about what's going on, and then he would make a biblical application. And, um, and, some, and some parables are more well-known. For example, the parable of the prodigal son, probably one of the most um, known or recognized parables that we have in our Bible. And, and there's some other parables that we've heard and that Jesus here, you know, we talked we talk a few weeks ago about the, the farmer throwing out the seed and the seed going on different soil, the hard ground, the thorny ground, the weedy ground. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, what that means. And basically the illustration of, of, the, of the Word of God being, uh, being inputted in people's heart, being downloaded in people's mind. And, um, and, and so that is a principle that he was teaching the disciples about the sower and, and throwing the seed. And that's, a, that's a, one of Jesus' famous parables. But the parable that I want to share this morning is one of those lesser-known parables. It's one of those parables that when you read it, you, you, it's okay, you, you don't get it sometimes. You know, it's one of those where you just kind of skip over. and It's only one verse, so it's very easy to miss. It's like that town that has just the post office, and if you're not careful, you'll miss it. You know, you're driving through. You know, that, that's what this is all about. If you're not careful, you're just driving through. You're just reading through the Bible, and you may just miss the parable, but it's one of Jesus' lesser-known parables. And, and, and this morning, I want to see what the story is, and then I want to flesh it out, because I think it's a beautiful truth. I think it's a very beautiful principle that really applies to us here this morning. And here's the parable. Jesus was talking in Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 44. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. And so when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had, and he bought that field. And, and that's it. That's the story. That's the parable that Jesus told. And you can see how easy you could just kind of skim through the Bible or read through the Bible and really not register the parable. But Jesus told a parable, and, 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 and when I studied this parable, you know, and here's what I've imagine happening. Here's what I imagine is this man, he's walking through, maybe he's on his way to work, maybe he's on his way to his friend's house, and he's on his work and he's passing through a property, he, he's passing through the field, and, and in the field he found a, because of St. Patrick's Day, okay, just hang with me, he found a pot of gold, okay? Uh, he found a pot of gold, I don't know if it was the pot of gold, but he found a treasure, okay? He found something and it was really cool. I mean, whatever it was, it, it was big time. He said, man, this is awesome. This was exciting. And, and so he was really pumped, but he couldn't take it because it wasn't on his property. He didn't want to steal. But then he noticed that there was a for sale sign on it. And, and the property, you know, the, the treasure was so valuable. And here's how I know it was so valuable. is that when he hit it, he went and he sold everything he owned, took the money, and bought that land. He bought the property, all because, all because of that treasure that he found in the field. He, he saw this, and he was so moved by this that he had to, and in order to get this, he had to get all of that. Okay, so if anyone asks you this morning what you've learned in church, you just say this and that, Okay. To get this, the treasure, he had to get that, which is the property. He had to get all of that. This, get, bear with me, this was worth all of that. When I was in Florida, I, and I lived in Florida before I moved up here, and I was on staff at a church in my very first house, um, my realtor, his name is Harvey. Harvey was also my mechanic. 
Harvey was also, uh, you know, my guidance counselor. Harvey was like, you know, the, uh, like Lucy, you know, and Charlie Brown, and, you know, she could be anything for Charlie Brown. That was Harvey for me. Harvey, I need my car fixed. Harvey, there's a fire in my house. What do I need to do? You know, Harvey. Harvey, in the South, in Pensacola, if he had a grown beard, he would be, he, we, would reckon, we would probably recognize him on Duck Dynasty or something. I mean, he had that look. All right? Harvey, kind of country bumpkin, redneck, Harvey. And, and I was looking for a place to live, and I found an apartment. I was going to spend the money, and I was going to rent this apartment. And Harvey came to me and said, Scott. Scott, what are you thinking? I said, well, I need a place to live. And he said, why rent when you can buy? And, and, and Harvey convinced me to buy a house. And, and so we drive around Pensacola. He found out how much money I had to spend. and said, I can, I can find you a house. I said, well, it's not a lot of money. I said, don't worry about it. You can buy a house with that. I know it. I can take care of you. And I'm kind of nervous because it's my first big deal. I mean, I just graduated from a Bible college, Bible school, and, and I don't have a lot of money. Um, my paycheck wasn't very great, and, and I'm thinking, how am I going to buy a house with the money that I make? And so Harvey started taking me all over the place. They took me to this one house in the old part of town, and this house was built in the 1950s, an old house. And it was, had wood paneling. Whoever lived there decided, you know, it must have been a lady that lived there because she painted it pink. So I had a pink house. And, 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 and he drove up and said, Here, I, I, he, he's telling me as we get there, I found a great deal for you, Scott. You're going to love this. You're going to love this house. And we drive up and it's here to bright pink. I'm like, what in the world? Harvey, what are you taking me here for? He said, hey, Scott, you just got to look past that. You got to look past the pink. Okay, okay, all right, all right. And, and, and so we get in the house, and, and there were five people that living in the house, and it's 900 square feet, no basement, no attic, so you can imagine what that looks like, right? It, it is crazy. And, and I'm looking, I'm stepping on toys, I'm, I'm stepping on stuff, there's no, no room, there's no elbow room, because it had so much stuff, and, and Harvey kept reminding me, he said, Scott, you know, you just got to look past that. Just, you just hang in there, buddy. And, and then he started selling me the idea of the possibility that this could be my house. And the more that he talked, and the more that he began to dream, and to, and to throw some ideas, the more I fell in love with this. And, and, and before you know it, we bought the house. I bought the house. I was a single guy. I haven't met my wife yet with my bachelor pad. And um, I bought the house for $33,000. What a deal. About, that was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. That's not that long ago, okay? 1999. And, and so $33,000 was a great market to buy a house. I bought the house. And then I got a roommate. He was in the military. And, and, and he paid the mortgage rent for me. I mean, so I live in the house for free. It was a great deal. I mean, for him it was a great deal. It was a great deal all around. And I, I got this, but I had to look past that. And let me tell you about that. Let me tell you about that, okay? I mean, how many of you ever live in Florida? Some of you may have, okay, all right. Here's what you get when you live in Florida. You get frogs that like to come in your house. I mean, slimy frogs, and I, I hate frogs. I mean, growing up, for some reason, I love them, but I'm scared of frogs because when you try, these, little, these are little guys. I'm not talking about the big ones. I'm talking about the little guys. And you try to catch them, and then and right before you try to catch them in your hand, right, they jump on top of you, and you freak out, and, oh, you know, what's going on here? You know, and, and, you know, just squatted. You know, we had the frogs. And there were, we had a bunch of frogs in the house that just liked to come in. And, and, and then, you know, I wake up in the morning, you know, I look up in the ceiling, and on top of the ceiling is a lizard. You know, and I, I and get this little tree lizard, you know, real small. And I, you know, my wife, when we got married, she was the lizard catcher. That was her job. I said, honey, there's a lizard in the room. Go get her. She, ooh, you know, she, for some reason, that was exciting for her. And, and, and then we had spiders. And so we got spiders up here. No, 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 no. We got spiders up here. Yeah, I get that. The daddy long legs. I can handle the daddy long legs. Down there, we got spiders. 
I'm not going to even tell you more stories about that because there's some stories that will just make you, oh, really? Yes, spider, snakes. All right, because we've got the lizards and the frogs. Guess what? We've got a buffet at our house. And, and, so, the, and, the frog, and, and so we got snakes. And, and, and then after we got married, my wife, you know, we had a car. And we'd drive it around. And one day we left the car door open. I thought we were getting something out in the, in the house. But we only left it open for a few minutes. And in, in the high, and we were driving around for a week, and it was right before it got really hot. You know, it was, it was like in March, you know, kind of nice. And we're driving around, and we started noticing um, little droppings in the car. And I, what in the world is going on? You know, and I, I called somebody, and Harvey, I called Harvey. I said, Harvey, what's up with these droppings in my car? He said, probably a cockroach. By the way, cockroaches. You open up the cupboard, and they start coming out, and they're like this big, and they're floated. They want to get in your hair or something. It's just like this, you know. <laughs> and so I called Harvey and said, what's up with these droppings? He said, well, you know, cat roaches are known for droppings. I said, no, come on. I mean, these are little, just like droppings. I said, come on, Harvey. And so, you know, a week passed, and we kept seeing droppings. I'm looking under the car seat. I'm not seeing anything. I'm looking for cat roaches. Well, one of those days was the very first warm, warm day. By the way, that's coming soon here. It's going to happen. We had that last week, and then it kind of went back to cold, right? But we had a very, very first warm day. My wife opened the back seat of the car. We had a rat that big flopping around because it was so hot. And so we called that car the Ratmobile, and, um, <laughs> and I think we sold it pretty quick. We couldn't live, couldn't live with that, that we had a rat living in our car for a week. Ugh. Hey, but I saw treasure in the house. I loved the house. It was a great little house. And I love it. I had to deal with that to get with this. Here's the deal. This guy right here, he was so pumped about the treasure. He didn't care what about that property he had. He didn't care. He didn't let anything stop him or freak out. He, didn't, he said, oh, man, this, I got a bad deal. No, because he saw this. And he, because he saw this, he could look past that. He could get past that. By the way, when I moved to a new home, we eventually, you know, my wife and I, we got married. And, you know, uh, it was a great house for, by myself and with a roommate and uh, two guys. We don't have a, you know, a wardrobe pretty small and care and moved in, and we, you know, we needed a bigger space and, uh, because we were thinking about having a family. So um, we needed a little bit bigger space, and so we moved. And uh, let me say this. We didn't move because of the frogs, the spiders, the cockroaches, because they were at the next house too. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Sometimes we, we sometimes think, the grass, is always, you know, the grass is greener on the other side of the, of the track, right? We say, you know what? It's going to be better over there. It's going to make sense over there. I like what I'm doing. I like what I'm having now. I'm enjoying the treasure. The treasure here motivates me. I see what's going on. Man, but I'm, I'm focusing on this and that. I'm focusing on all of this. It's really bothering me. But man, the grass looks a little greener over there. I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to enjoy that field. Guess what? That field got problems too. And, and, and when I moved to a new house, it seemed like we had more frogs, more snakes, but that's not the re Hey, we didn't move because, oh man, we got to get away from all this. We focused on the treasure. On the treasure. Now, as I think about church, I think about us here. You know, here we are in our third year. We're, you know, we're just moving along. God is blessing us. We've seen 25% growth each year, which is fantastic, which is awesome. And that's God doing it. We're, we're seeing God doing some great things. And in that first couple of years, you know, kind of like the honeymoon stage. Okay, hey, remember the honeymoon in your marriage? You know, everything's perfect. You found, hey, when you marry your husband or, or when you marry your wife, she was perfect, right? You said, man, I found the treasure. And then after the honeymoon kind of fades away, 
you start noticing a big field. <laughs> Holy smokes. My wife, my wife, I fooled my wife. I mean, she saw a huge field. She said, honey, what, what am I getting myself into? Oh, yeah, I should have showed you the backyard. I should have showed you the backyard of my life. I got, you know, every now and then the snake comes out, the, the cockroaches come out. I mean, I got a field. I got a property. I've, I've got that. And so do you. Now, here we are at Lake Point. We're in our first couple of years. Everyone likes each other. We get along. It's a happy time. And then we start to get to know each other. <laughs> hey, welcome to life, right? Happens in your family. Got that crazy uncle. You know, that you're trying to avoid at Christmas time, right? But, you know, we, we start, hey, we, it's very easy. We start getting underneath, underneath each other's skin from time to time. And we say, you know what? Sometimes I've seen this happen. I have seen this happen. I've seen this happen here. Well, you know, I just can't deal with that. I love this. I love what I'm seeing, but I just, I've got an issue with somebody. I've got an issue with this. I've got an issue with that. I, you know what? It's time for me to... It's time for me to find another place. And then we go to another place. Guess what? The problem, if you run away from your problem, I don't want to sound clicky today, but that's what it is, right? Your problem can follow you. We have to learn to deal with our relationship issues. We have to learn to forgive. We've got to learn what the Bible says, to love one another. And, 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 and so, but I've seen people, it's a way, you know, I just don't, you know, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that over here. I really love this. I really love what God is doing. I've seen people saved. I've seen people getting baptized. I've seen people, you know, God is blessing the church. And, and sometimes we focus on the minor deals, the minor issues. And we lose sight of what's important. Now, here's a statement. You want to write this down in your handout notes? Here's the statement. Lake Point Church. Lake Point Church is an imperfect church. Y'all knew that, right? With imperfect people. Talk about you. Led by an imperfect pastor, that's me. Hey, I'm going to blow it. I'm telling you, there's going to be times when you're going to be like, man, I don't understand that. There's going to be times where you're going to be like, man, I got to send that email. Hey, I bring it, because I know I'm, I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. And I know you're not perfect. But we've got to get that in our head. With that, you want to know what this is? We're worshiping a perfect Savior. Worshiping a perfect Savior. So here's what I want to do for a few minutes. I want to focus a few minutes on the treasure. I want us to worship God. I want us to celebrate this. And when we focus on this, we can get past all of that. Are y'all with me this morning or just myself? Y'all not your heads. Oh, okay, I'm, I, I don't get you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's focus on the treasure. I've got a video I want to show to highlight what God has done in the past couple of years.
All right. Awesome. Um, just a couple of quick treasures. If you want to write it down in your handout notes, a few, um, a few things. 185 attendant averages right now in 2013. That's, um, last year we were averaging about 150, so it's already a 22, 23% increase, what we're seeing already. Since we've started, 75 people have come to know Christ and then 52 baptism. And then, and, and these are just numbers. And, and these numbers, I, I have a statement that's on your handout note that every number has a name, every name has a story, and every story matters to God. And I truly believe that. And, and so these are awesome numbers. And then, and then we've seen some uh, uh, spiritual growth as well. We've seen some numerical growth, we've seen some spiritual growth. You know, when we did the 40 days in the Word in the beginning of the year, uh, in January and February, and the response from people telling me that they're reading their Bibles more, you know, the memorizing their verses. And I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the, the stories now, and it's fantastic to see people who are growing. That's what it's all about. We're here for life change. We're here because we want to reach people to become engaged disciples of Jesus Christ. And we want to help them to know God. We want to help them to grow with other believers. We want to help them to grow in their world, grow in their community, and let the people know that God is here, that Jesus rose again. And see, it's all about him. And it's all about him. I asked Stephanie, Stephanie, why don't you come up here? And Stephanie is um, going to share a story about what God is doing with her and what God is doing in her life. And I asked her to share her story, and I know that you'll be moved by what she's going to say. lights were going to be dark and I couldn't see anybody. Hmm? He said the lights would be dark and it would be like talking to nobody. Yeah, it's somewhat dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, what did you do? I didn't do anything. Okay. 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 First, I just want to say that I have serious anxiety issues, so I'm the last person that should be up here, so just bear with me. Um, my family and friends came out today, so thank you guys for coming out and making sure I don't swear. Okay. Okay, first, um, I would just like to tell a story. That was quick. Okay, um, my son Mikey, he's uh, almost four. Uh, for several months, uh, he battled a severe skin condition. It was, how much time do I have? Um, it made him, it was painful and it made him very uncomfortable. Uh, we had to wrap him in um, uh, ointments and um, wet wrapping all day long. He couldn't go anywhere. He, he couldn't do anything. Um, I couldn't do much to comfort him, and I would cry all day, and I would cry all night. Throughout the night, I would wake up and uh, pray. Uh, I would pray a lot. I would question God. For months, I questioned God. I was mad at God. I thought he left me. I was certain of it, that he left me. Um, My cousin Heather, Heather, my cousin Heather invited me several times to come to Lake Point Church. In fact, I think she was on commission. I'm not sure. And um, so finally, I didn't end up coming to church, and I brought my mom and my sister with me. And through the um, entire message, I was angry. I didn't want to be here at all. I was angry at Pastor Scott through the entire message because <laughs> I was really mad at him. And uh, he kept saying, to praise God in our storm. <laughs> okay. Obviously, he didn't know my storm, and he was making me very angry because my storm was way too painful to praise God. I was too angry. Um, he, he said, whenever we are facing the winds of adversity, we ought to hold on and watch God do something great.
So that day here at Lake Point Church, I prayed, and then I made the decision to make to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, and I prayed for the strength to give him my worry and my fear and my pain. And when I left here that day, when I drove home, I left singing the songs that were played here. And the one song that um, they sang today, it kept playing in my head and it said, you never have to be afraid. And when I got home and I wrapped my key as usual, we usually cried together the entire time. But this time he cried and I sang. I sang to him the songs that I heard and just about not being afraid and I just kept telling him that God is going to do something great, I promise. And from that day on, when anybody asked me, how's Mikey, which was my least favorite question because it just made me mad, I would say, God is going to do something great. And two weeks after I came here for my first time, I was baptized. And about three weeks later, we received um, a blessing. We my parents, my family, my friends held a fundraiser so that we could raise enough money to um, get us to National Jewish Health Research Hospital, which is in Denver, Colorado. Mikey was a part of a three-week um, treatment program, and they got his skin under control, and they gave us a maintenance program. And every day that I was there, I talked to God, and I began to build a relationship with Jesus. While I was there, I had the Bible app on my phone, and that got me through that time. I guess if there's a moral to this story, it would be it would be that I know another storm is coming. There are going to be so many storms in my life, and it's OK because when the next storm comes, I won't be praising God or, or praying to God, just this invisible um, God that I've always kind of prayed to and wondered why nothing spectacular was happening, why I wasn't feeling it. When the next storm comes, and it will come, I hope it doesn't come soon, but I know it's going to come. When it does come, I will be ready because I will be praying to my God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, Stephanie was in our small group that I was teaching, and she shared her story, and she was sharing a story about how she was mad at me. I was like, how could you be mad at me? She shared a story and how God worked in her heart in that service. You know, and how God changed her life, changed her perspective, changed everything. Does that mean that She's still going to have the storms of life? Absolutely. She's got a new focus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 1 and 2, and if we talk about the treasure, we talk about some great things. Baptism, talk about salvation. We've heard a story of life change. Let me talk about the treasure. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that slows us down, that hinders us, and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run. Let us run with perseverance. Let us run with patience. Let's run for the, for the distance. Let's run it through. He said, let us run the race. What is the race? That's life. That's your life and my life. We're to run the race with patience, with perseverance. And how do we get perseverance? 
How do we get the strength that we need to move forward every day and every minute? He says this in verse number two, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of our faith. And so we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Why? Why should we fix our eyes on Jesus? Because he ran the race and he won it. He won the race. He says here, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its chain, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus won. He died. He was buried and rose again. Listen, listen here. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, you can have that same power in you. Wow. And we fix our eyes on him. The treasure. It makes it worth it all. The deal with life that. To deal with that, and all of life has to throw at us, and the curveball that it throws at us every day, every week. But when we focus on this, it changes everything. Here's the treasure. Here's the question. Do you know God? Let me ask you this. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship? with God in your life? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? I'm not talking about you know about him. You know, I know who Obama is, okay? I'm sure you do, but I don't know him personally. If I showed up in his house out of the blue, I'd be dead. I'm not talking about do you, I'm talking about do you know Jesus? in a relationship. Not about Jesus, do you know him? See, Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in a grave. And he's the only man that I know that came back from life. And he did that for you and for me. And for some of you, you've been fixing your eyes on this, You've been fixing your eyes on that. This morning, I'm asking you to fix your eyes on God and know Him as your Savior. And let Him come into your life. And let Him change you from the inside out. Maybe you're here, you're a believer in Christ. Maybe you're here at Late Point, you're a member. And lately, you've been focusing on that. You've been focusing on that. Lately, you've kind of had this. I'm asking you to get your eyes back here. We're an imperfect church with imperfect people led by an imperfect pastor worshiping a perfect Savior. And I pray that we follow him. And if you don't know him, I pray that you get your eyes on him. Ask him to come in your life, forgive you of your sin. Guess what? He'll do it. He will come in and change you. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to pay for it. It comes in in your life. You see, Jesus Christ already paid for it on the cross for you. We're going to ask everyone, everyone to close their eyes. Head bow, eyes closed. I don't do this very often, but I feel compelled to do this this morning. Maybe that there's someone here that you're here, you don't have a relationship with Christ. You know about him. You know people that know him. But you personally, you've never asked Christ to come into your life. You've never asked him to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins. He says, God, you don't understand. My sins are pretty bad. It doesn't matter. God loves you so much that he paid for it. No matter what you've done, he loves you and wants to forgive you of your sins. He's just asking you to give your life to him. 
to turn your life to him. And you simply do it by asking God. You ask God and say, God, please forgive me of my sins. And maybe just someone here this morning, that's your next step. It's to ask Christ to come into your life, to forgive you of your sins, and to give you a new perspective, a new hope, just like Stephanie experienced in her life. It doesn't mean that your problem is going to go away, but it's to give you a new life, a new look, a new perspective, hope. Hope in this life and hope in the next. And maybe you're here this morning and say, God, I never asked Christ to come into my life. I'm going to pray a prayer right here for you. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray it in your heart. It's not the words that you're going to say. It's not magic words, but it's your heart. And if your heart is speaking to God and God is listening through the music, through the quietness of your heart, he's listening. And here's the prayer. If you're here this morning, you say, I don't have a relationship with God, but I would like to. Here's the prayer. Say, Dear God, I know I am a sinner. I know that I am perfect. I have blown it. I have screwed up so many times. And God, I have fixed my eyes on other things of this world, trying to find peace, trying to find hope in everything but you. And so, God, I'm turning my eyes to you. I'm fixing my eyes to you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my life and to change me from the inside out. They have a new hope, a new perspective. Oh, God, come into my life. No one's looking. I just, you know, that's the prayer. He said, God, I prayed that prayer. I, I said it just like that. And I mean it with all of my heart. I ask God just now, just where I'm sitting at, I ask God to come into my heart. I've never done anything like that before. Well, maybe I did before, and I didn't really mean it, but today I meant it. If that is true this morning, I want to look, and I just want to see who you are. You said, God, I prayed that prayer, and I asked God, I asked Jesus to come into my life. If that's true, raise your hand. I just want to see who you are. Anybody in this room this morning? So I prayed the prayer, and I asked Jesus to come into my life. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? I see one hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? God, we thank you for our three years. We thank you for those that made this decision. God, maybe there's someone here that's still thinking about it. God, I pray that they will take that next step very soon. God, I pray for those who are Christians, who are disciples, followers of you, God, I pray that they focus on you, not lose sight of the prize, and not lose sight of the treasure. Help us to see that it's worth it all for your glory. And you know my pray. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to worship God for a minute. What a Savior.